Hey everybody, it's Derek here. Thanks for stopping by. So I'm coming at you in uh, February here. It's Black History Month still. And I wanted to talk about these two Colson Whitehead books. Okay, so Colson Whitehead. I want to talk about the first novel here by him, uh, The Underground Railroad, which was uh, Oprah's book club selection back in 2016. Uh, I really did like this book. It's still, I, I'm going to be honest about both of these books, and I'm probably going to spend most of my time on the Underground Railroad by him. Um, I wasn't crazy about Colson Whitehead. Maybe I'm missing something. I will warm up to him eventually. But this was still, you know, four stars, I think, is what I gave it. Uh, maybe I rounded up from like 3.8 or something. Uh, I definitely enjoyed the Underground Railroad more than I did crook manifesto um but anyway this is uh not a not a terribly intimidating read it's uh how many pages are we talking it actually moves quite fast i did like that about this book it's 306 pages it's a fair amount of dialogue you know the text isn't especially small you can you can work through this pretty fast um and and it's fast moving too now before i get into the probably the centerfold the neatest idea about this book I have to mention what he alludes to throughout the book, I think twice. He mentions Gulliver's Travels, which I happen to have read a few years ago. Whoops. It's even mentioned in, in the flap here. He's kind of recreating black history, re reimagining it, if you will. The neatest part about this book, as you can tell from the cover, you see all those railroads. Well, there were no actual railroads run by you know, abolitionists or... Uh, the Vigilance Committee or what have you. But he he takes this in a different direction. And and you can kind of see these shades of Jonathan Swift uh, with Gulliver's travels, you know, as Cora leaves these various terrible situations, she finds herself in these places. Lots of historical liberty is taken here, lots of uh, fiction, uh, which, I mean, it's a novel, so why shouldn't he do that? But he really holds true to the the attitudes and realities of slavery uh, in the South in particular. And I guess with his allusion to Gulliver's travels, I think what he's trying to communicate, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is Swift, as you know, had to, uh, had to resort to fantasy, right, to get his point across, to exaggerate and caricature aspects of humanity and as you probably know if you read Jonathan Swift he has an extremely dim view of humanity you know and that's a, that's especially captured at the end uh, of Gulliver's Travels and I think what Colson Whitehead is doing by invoking Gulliver's Travels I think he's saying that it doesn't matter if you make parts of black history really fantastical the net lesson is essentially the same <laughs> you know where swift has to kind of take you to these extremes and these kind of comic uh, extremities for you to to pick up on his point and his criticism colson whitehead by contrast i think he's saying that this is just as bad as reality was during slavery let me know how you interpreted his uh, allusion to Jonathan Jonathan Swift. That's sort of how I understood what Colson Weiss, Whitehead was doing, and I thought that that was very creative. Probably the best part about this book. The next best part is, I guess you would say, like the Lewis and Clark uh, trolley type adventure story that you get from you know Cora leaving these various horrible uh, situations, you know, generally in a plantation, or she went to other places. I don't want to spoil the story for you, but you know, fleeing slave catchers and all that sort of thing. And she has to steal herself away on these uh, these actual railroad lines, you know, through uh, through the dark and uh, through crags and all of this this wild adventure that that she takes, you know, and very dangerous, very dangerous adventure. She loses people that are close to her. And it's a really neat, I guess I guess you could say like reimagining of black black slave history or, uh, if reimagining isn't the right word, you know, turning it into a fantasy, if you will. Uh, it's not like magical elements in it, but uh, just, you know, a, a kind of a 
parallel universe going on here. If you could imagine black, black history rolling out just slightly differently, you would probably end up in this book. And that was, that was a really neat concept. Now, I think if I say any more about this book, I'm going to ruin it. I don't want to spoil the story for you. Uh, but I would say, yeah, four stars. Uh, you know, Colson Whitehead is definitely a good writer. He's not my favorite. Uh, I think both of these novels sort of fell flat in a way, especially the next one I'm going to talk about. But uh, at least the Underground Railroad has... Uh, like all the trappings of, you know, Southern America during the antebellum period. And I really enjoyed that whole, you know, literal railroad odyssey that this book takes you on. So uh, I'm going to table that just for a moment and, and talk about Crook Manifesto. This obviously didn't happen during the slave era. This happened in the 70s, uh, I think from between 1971 and 1976. It's a Harlem story. You know, you got police corruption and you've got, uh, um, you know, insurance burnings and gentrification and crime and the mafia. And, you know, like there's lots of really cool elements. It's, it's kind of atmospheric the way the Underground Railroad is. I couldn't really get into this book. I don't know if it's Colson Whitehead's fault. It is a little bit, as I said. His other his other book didn't necessarily like knock my socks off, even though there were nice things to say about it. In the same way, this just failed to kind of draw me in. I don't know why. I I got the the sense it was like a lot of uh, and then and then and then and then and then. You know, I I didn't feel like I was put in the story. And what I was going to add is that I could be a little bit unfairly critical of him right now because. I was sort of distracted, like I, I, there were things going on in my personal life that were like I just I couldn't settle into a book for some reason, uh, and I kind of felt like that maybe spoiled this for me a little bit. I will probably revisit this because Colson Whitehead, you know, he's very relevant. Everyone's talking about him. This particular book got really good uh, press, and and you know it was well received. Uh, and people just went nuts for this uh, Underground Railroad back in 2016. So, you know, I, I the problem is probably mine, but I still had to rate this pretty low. I think this was like three or less for me. Again, it was probably my state of mind. Let me know in the comments below if if I did if I am somewhat right though that you know he kind of failed to capture you, failed to bring you into the book. And it was a little bit like, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, you know, and that gets a little bit irritating. There's more, there's better ways of telling a story, in my opinion. With that, I'd love to talk to you in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next one. Hey, everyone. I hope you liked this video. If you want more like the one you just watched, click the suggested video on this screen. Make sure you subscribe. And to connect with me on my other platforms, my handles are linked below in the description, all right? Take care, peeps. Till next time.